popping in. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. You bet. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Coach, I mean, when Ant and I were talking and previewing this team a couple of days ago, we were really looking at the fact of how young this team was and how many sophomores were con big contributors a year ago. Uh, assuming that you're going to be getting some of those back, I think this team's going to be pretty exciting. So why don't we start off right there and meet the team for this 2022 edition of the Red Devils? Well, we're definitely excited for this season. Um, we, have, <laughs> we only lost two girls last year, had two seniors. Um, we only have one senior this year. Um, so a lot of starters that we have started from their freshman year on. Um, so lots of varsity experience, a lot of club experience with a lot of the girls. Um, just the culture change in the past three years um, just has been unreal. Um, all the girls, they're, they're, they're buying in. They're putting the time in. They're at every off season. Uh, we go to jump stretch twice a week. Um, so the girls do that over at the Youngstown YMCA with Carla Rosa. Uh, they're working their tails off. They have open gym twice a week. Um, a lot of summer league uh, they did this year. Um, but just all the girls are showing up. They're all bought in, uh, and they're all excited for this season. Coach, I had a chance to see you guys a couple of times last year. The last time I saw you was the tournament win against United. And what I noticed really quick about your coaching style, man, you have poured, like, your whole energy into this team. You are so passionate about their success. And uh, – I think it's what the program needed. So, one, kudos to that. And, and I, I love seeing coaches that pour into their programs the way you do. But when you took the pro, when you took the program program over, how important was it to you to this for the next two months of, of volleyball to pour everything you have into this program and show the players that not only do you care about their success on the court, but you care about them as people too. Uh, with with a lot of our girls, that's the key. Um, you know, we have a great coaching staff. Uh, we have all the pieces put in place. Um, our girls know that we care about them. They know that we're going to put the time in. Um, all of our coaches, uh, you know, whatever they need, we're there for. Um, it just, it's just, it's great where they're at. Um, again, we're just, we're just excited. The girls are bought in. Um, again, huge culture change from when I started coaching to where we are now. Um, you know, when I started coaching, you know, we didn't have many players that knew the game of volleyball. Um, you know, and I had girls that I was, you know, that I were trying to get ready to, to play at the varsity level, uh, to put on that court. Um, and now I'm, you know, and another, a good problem is I have tons of girls that I can put in at any time that know where to play. They know where to play multiple positions. Um, and then I feel comfortable putting in our lineup if, you know, if we need a change in energy, um, if somebody's struggling, um, I have girls that are going to step it up. For a team that is for a team that's that's growing, I mean, you guys played non-conference games exceptionally well last year, and I I would say that the focal point of this year, I would guess, is to maybe just turn that conference record uh, over a little bit and start getting some more wins. From your experience as a coach and what you saw on the court, what are some things that can be done in the, that co those conference games? We know it's a tough conference, but what are some things we can that can be done to maybe turn some of those conference games over? Uh, it, it is a very tough conference. Uh, we have Crestview, you know, newly added. Garfield, newly added. Um, definitely really good teams. Uh, Brookfield's always a tough team. LeBray's tough. Um, my first couple of years, we really focused on passing, um, getting ball control where it needed to be. And we're at a pretty good point now where we're, we're, we're a pretty good passing team. Um, our girls, they're hustlers. Uh, they're going to run through the wall. <laughs> they're going to run through the curtain. They're going to keep the ball alive. Um, they do a lot of exciting things, you know, and they're willing to put everything on the line for their teammates. Um, and then they're, they're starting to believe in themselves, uh, which I think that's, you know, what we've been missing the most. Um, they're kind of, they were in that mindset, hey, it's, it's camel volleyball. We're just kind of out here. Um, you know, nobody expects us to win. Everybody expects to beat us to where that's not our mindset anymore. Um, they had really good success in one of our summer leagues. Um, you know, they were the top team out of 16 teams in the one session. Um, and there were some good teams at that session. So they played against really good competition. Um, and just the team that we are now compared to then is just night and day, just in the past month or two. Um, since the season started, we incorporated uh, faster pace offense, um, much more tempo to our offense now that, you know, our ball controls where it needs to be. Um, so we're excited. The girls are excited. Um, it's just, we're, we're in a good place. 
My guy, I have to imagine the next step that you want to achieve in this program is to establish a winning culture. So when they go on the floor, they don't hope to win. They expect to win, right? They step on the floor expecting that they're going to win that match. Uh, what kind of growth have you seen in that kind of mindset? Because in the Camel Girls sports, we've been seeing that be a struggle in the last several years of, of the winning culture. So what have you kind of done in this volleyball program to try to establish the confidence in themselves and that winning mindset when they step on the floor? So that's been that's been one of the struggles with us. Um, and for a few years, our you know our coaching staff believed in our players more than our players believed in ourselves. Um, so that's one thing. Again, a ton of our girls are playing club volleyball, um, which is a huge attribute to the kids, um, to their parents for making the sacrifices. Um, we have I mean, great parental involvement with our program. Um, you know, parents do such a great job of getting the kids to where they need to be when they need to be there. Um, and then just that success in club season, you know, being part of winning teams, um, you know, and getting to see that, you know, hey, I, I do belong on the court. Um, you know, I, I lace my shoes up the same way these other girls do. Uh, and and we put the time in. <laughs> the girls put the time in. Um, I, I promise you there's not another program that's putting the time into practice that our girls are. Uh, they they're show up day in and day out. They're on time. They're early. Uh, I mean, I have several girls that, that don't miss anything. And, I mean, their success is an attribute to that. You talked about the improvement in the passing game over the years, too. I want I can't go without mentioning Carla Ramirez because I love giving love to these setters, too. I mean, 514 assists and just 14 ball handling errors. That's an incredible percentage, especially for a sophomore. What can you speak on on her impact to this team and how – much she's improved in her short time with you. Uh, Carla, she's, she's a great player. Um, she's quiet, but she, she leads by example. Um, she's one of the first girls in practice. Uh, she's one of the last ones to go. Um, she's always encouraging for her teammates. Uh, if, I think if you look at our roster last year, we didn't have a ton of players that could put the ball away. Uh, you know, I don't think that that it's a surprise to anybody that our offense last year kind of run through ran through Kendall Braun. Um, and Carla knows that. And she's she's a great, she's a smart setter. She knows where to put the ball. She knows, you know, who's who's on for the day. Um, you know, and she and she feeds those those players that are gonna put the ball away. Um, and we're excited for this year is again with the faster tempo offense, um, and with the development of a couple of our outside hitters. Uh, we have Angelise Diaz, uh, she's a junior. Um She's not real tall, but her vertical is unreal. Um, we just had her vertical done this summer, and she has 33-inch vertical. Um, we have Syra Cross, excellent passer. Um, her, her attack is very explosive. Um, we have a sophomore that's going to start varsity for us at middle, uh, Kaya Coleman-Clark. Um, her sister used to be a setter for us about four years ago, um, just both athletes, and she's just buying into the program. Um, she was very, very immature for like a practice standpoint, um, but she just showed so much more maturity this year. Um, again, she's one that's that used to maybe be late a little bit, but is now early, um, on time, great communicator, you know, putting in the time. Uh, we're excited. We have tons of options hitting wise this year. Um, and then obviously with our passing, that helps get our offense going. Um, and like I said, Carla does a great job. She, she, she knows where to put the ball. Um, she gets to every ball. Um, she's kind of our one girl that kind of goes under the radar because she does what she's supposed to do. And she's, I think she's our most consistent player. Um, so yeah, that helps. For you, what makes coaching in this Campbell community so special? And, and what, what do you think makes the community of Campbell so unique? Uh, well, I love it at Campbell. I, uh, I teach there uh, physical science and environmental science. Um, so it's nice having all these girls for class. Um, you know, and not all of our athletes have the best home life. Um, not all of our best athletes have the best conditions to live in, um, you know, as opposed to other schools. What, what I love about Camel is, you know, most schools over in Ohio are open enrolled and we're not. Um, so our, our team's homegrown. Uh, you know, we're not bringing in girls from other schools. Um, what we have is, is, is a testament to our girls putting the time in, working, getting better. Uh, we're real big on family, working for each other. Um, 
all, all of our girls get along. We, we don't have drama on the team. Um, that's one thing we really look at. Um, and that's one thing that's been really good for us. And, and the oh. girls buy in and they just, they just love each other. I want to follow up question because you, you know, you, the reality, like you said, is some of these girls don't have the best living conditions or the best uh, you know, home life. So how much, uh, how much kind of pride do you take that this team is almost their escape? Like they can go come to you and this program and kind of be a release for what they have to go through when they get out of the gym or they get out of school. Uh, that's got to be a lot of weight on your shoulders and a lot of respect given to, to you and, and to that situation. It is, and, and again, that goes back to you know our girls. They're they're putting putting the time in. They know that we care about them. Uh, they know that this is much bigger than volleyball. Um, and again, our our coaching staff. I mean, we we put in the time, and, and the girls follow suit with that. You know, um, our success is is because of them. Um, they've they've given up tons of what they used to do. Um, they've taken all those excuses, they've taken all the obstacles, um, all the problems, and they've set those aside and they've done a really good job finding solutions to those issues, to those problems, to those obstacles, hurdles. Um, and it just shows how much that they want it and how much that they do want to succeed. And again, we have a very unselfish group of girls. Um, and we have lots of girls on the team that would give up individual success for team success. I also want to give you a chance since we're on the topic, shout out the uh, coaching staff that you're going to be bringing this year. That's going to be helping assist you with, uh, with those practices and with uh, the team this season. Um, well, first I want to, I just want to give a shout out to our one senior, uh, Angelia Matsy. We have one senior this year. Um, she's doing an excellent job. Um, you know, she's projecting it right side for us. Um, you know, we're working on her to be a big block for us and to kind of help set our defense. Um, as far as coaching staff goes, um, a lot of shakeup this year in the coaching, but a lot of good shakeups. Um, seventh grade, we have Ashlyn Cleveley. She was our seventh grade coach last year. Um, she's also an assistant coach over at Canfield for lacrosse. Um, she does an excellent job. She, she buys in, she puts the time in, um, you know, you can really tell she cares about these girls. Um, she comes to me, talks to me about, you know, coaching advice. Um, you know, what we want to run, um, for, you know, for help with the girls. Um, so she does an excellent job putting the time in. Um, we have Nettie McDowell. She's our eighth grade coach. Uh, this is her first year. Uh, her daughter plays for us as well. Um, again, excellent coach. Um, another one that loves up on the kids. Those they're both teachers in the district. Um, now my assistant coach is actually my sister-in-law, um, Jacqueline Harsh. Um, she's also a teacher at the school. Um, it's really nice to have her on staff. She used to be a head varsity coach over in Pennsylvania. Um, so, you know, we have more head coaching experience. Um, and it's nice. I spend a lot of time with her outside of volleyball. So we're on the same page, you know, we know what the girls need to work on. Um, and then we've had, we have three volunteer assistants on staff. Um, Kim Claus, uh, she was a setter in college. So she does an excellent job with the girls. Um, she comes in in the evenings and runs small groups, uh, with our players. Um, Ryan Lombardo, he used to be an assistant uh, volunteer coach for Penn State Shenango. He does a great job working small groups with the girls during our practices. Um, we like to separate our setters and middles. Uh, he does an excellent job running that, uh, you know, working on placing the ball, running a fast tempo offense. Um, and then my wife, who was my assistant coach last year, uh, we just had a, a, a little girl. So she's taking the year off as my assistant coach, and she's a volunteer this year. So she's on staff as well, and, and she knows the girls really well. Um, so it's just great coaching staff. I couldn't be more static for where we're at as a program um, from seventh grade up. And, you know, the coaching staff and, and the girls that we have um, are a big, a big part of that. Um, the CLWCC we have now, um, it's a great, great center, great facility. We can put four volleyball courts in there. Um, so we're never short of space for practice. So we can split girls up. Uh, you know, we can get more reps, more touches. Um, Mr. Bowen, our superintendent, did a great job um, getting all of that in place. Um, Cheryl MacArthur runs that. Uh, so she does a really good job with us scheduling wise. Athletic director Stacy Seepin does a great job with us. Um, anything we need, you know, she works with us to get very supportive. Um, and then our high school administration, uh, we have Brad Yeager and Brian Nichols. They're, their support's just huge coming to games. 
um, you know, backing the coaching staff and just a rapport with the players is just second to none. So we want to thank you so much for your time today and putting in, uh, putting in the time to be with us. We thank you so much and we wish you the best of luck this season. Good to talk to you again this Thank you. We really appreciate it. And, you know, we look forward to the season. I, I, I think we're going to surprise some people this year.